This Halloween, ghoul all out with Instacart. Whether you're hunting for the perfect costume, eyeing that giant bag of candy, or casting spells with eerie decor, we've got it all in one place. Download the Instacart app and get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes. Plus, enjoy $0 delivery fees on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time, minimum $10 per order, service fees, other fees, and additional terms apply. Instacart, bringing the store to your door this Halloween. My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. You know, I've been talking about earned media value for quite some time on this podcast. My friends at Eisenberg have just raised the bar on earned media benchmarks with their social index. Social Index now gives you globally earned media values across a growing list of six geographies for all your KPIs across the top seven social platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. You can now visualize these values for deeper analysis, and they have a look-back window over two years of historical comparisons. Social Index is updated daily. Don't get stuck with old data. Over 1,000 companies have used the Social Index to understand the ROI of their social campaigns. And if you work with a social agency, you should demand they incorporate earned media values into your reports. Get your earned media value for social content. Visit earnedmediavalues.com slash Allen. Again, that's earnedmediavalues.com slash A-L-A-N. For all of us, it's about predicting where the consumer is going and getting half of it right. One of the things we want to do is create ads that don't suck. Embracing change creates great possibility. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today. Today on the show, I've got Jen Hartman. She's the Global Director of Public Relations and Social Media at John Deere. Just 25 years of public relations, communications, and marketing. 16 of those have been with John Deere. She's responsible for managing the image and reputation of the company. She leads media relations, social media community building, and handles crisis events and issues that could have an impact on the brand. On the show today, we talk about John Deere, the iconic green tractor company, and a 187-year-old brand and how they're trying to stay relevant in today's market. We talk about their recent hunt for a chief tractor officer, the selected candidate Rex will also highlight, and much more. You don't want to miss this episode with Jen Hartman. Well, Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Alan. It is great to be here. No, I'm excited about this conversation. Before we get into the business side of things, can you tell me, I, I hear you've, you've started a new, pro, a new nonprofit in the last year or so. I, I can't remember the exact timing. I'd love to hear a little yeah. bit more about it. Absolutely. My daughter, Lyric, is autistic. And we recognized right after she was diagnosed that one of the biggest challenges facing parents is just knowing where to turn and who to talk to, and what kind of services can help. So my husband and I launched a nonprofit, Royal Ball Run for Autism, which got its name via the 5K race that we started with. But it has since really grown over the past several years into a strong network of autism advocates, parents, family members, and autistic individuals themselves. So This year, we celebrated our 13th year, actually, and we've given back nearly $500,000 to support local autism programs here in the Quad Cities area where John Deere is based. Awesome. Awesome. Starting any organization is not no simple task. Starting a nonprofit is, I think, a challenge on top of a challenge. (laughs) I don't know if you feel the Um, same way. 
I do. I, I will tell you that anyone that knows me and you and I have had a chance to talk a couple of times now, I do nothing small. And so when I recognized a need, I decided I needed to help solve that for other parent. Here we are. Challenge accepted. Uh, yep. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's start about your career path. You are now the Global Director of Strategic Public Relations and Enterprise Social Media at John Deere. Where did you get your start in your career and, and what were some of the stops along the way? Sure. I was one of those kids that graduated from high school thinking I wanted to be a, a teacher and particularly English. I always had a knack for anything communications or reading or writing related. And during college, I discovered public relations, really made up my mind. And I tell my, this story quite a bit that I was traveling in and out of Chicago on a train reading the alumni newsletter from Northern Illinois University, where I graduated, and seeing what other co-students had been placed or where they were working. And I still remember thinking someday I wanted to work for John Deere and that someday I would be the head of public relations for the company. I live not too far from world headquarters um, of John Deere, knew a lot of family members who worked here. And just really grew up thinking what a great place this would be to work. And ultimately, had a number of public relations roles throughout the years, landed here at John Deere about 16 years ago, and grew my career here at the company from there. I love it. It, felt, it feels like it was destiny that you ended up there. It was. I, it, it was a long road to get here. Um, half of my career was before I started at Deere. But all those experiences, I worked with the Illinois Soybean Association, United Way, all of those experiences really prepared me for the work that I've been doing since I arrived here. I think everyone should know John Deere and more, maybe more specifically, the iconic green tractors. <laughs> but the company is likely so much more than green tractors. How do you describe what John Deere is in, in total, if you will? We actually just launched a brand campaign, We Run For All, because we recognize that nearly everything we touch on a daily basis, whether we're getting up and having coffee, brushing our teeth, taking our car to work, driving on that road, picking up an Egg McMuffin at McDonald's, everything we do and touch in a day was somehow produced by one of our customers. And that includes the clothes we wear, right? From cotton farmers and the like. So I would say that John Deere is, and our customers are instrumental in growing food, building infrastructure, and maintaining the land in ways that I'm not sure a lot of people fully appreciate. Yeah, if you put it that way, you're, there's not much you don't, in some ways, impact or touch at the source of where everything starts, so to speak. Uh, and that's, I know we're going to be talking today about our TikTok strategy, but that ultimately is how we landed on our TikTok strategy. How can we help, especially a younger generation, more fully appreciate the role farmers, construction, maintenance crews, how do they all play a pivotal role in all of our lives every day? Yeah, You're, you've already got to my next question, frankly. You're, yeah. The company is 187 years old in terms of its brand. You're talking about staying relevant. How are you thinking about that? A few years ago, when we were at sea, we announced the first commercially available autonomous vehicle. That surpasses anything that's commercially available from any other autonomous vehicle company. And I remember coming back to my team. So I oversee a team of public relations and social media team members. And I said to the team, is our social media and public relations strategies living up to this moment? Are we that innovative? And I think that really set the bar for us in terms of really taking a look at how we were showing up online in particular 
and whether or not that presence reinforced just how incredibly innovative John Deere is in the world of construction and farming. So that really sparked where we headed and where we are today. I love it. And that I think that feeds right into this latest effort that you guys have, this hunt for the chief tractor officer. How did that come about? And give me a little of the, if you don't mind, like a little bit of like where it came about and how you thought about launching it, if you will. Yeah. So as we started watching TikTok and, and certainly fully aware that we could reach a younger demographic there, one of the surprising things we found is that despite the fact we did not have any published videos until 2024 when we launched this search for the chief tractor officer, we were one of the top five brands on all of TikTok in terms of the numbers, the number of videos viewed with hashtag John Deere. And the amount of views on those videos that were hashtag John Deere amounted to the billions. Wow. So we recognized that we already had a lot of storytelling happening around our brand and, and very much about our equipment. Our customers are really proud to share the work they do, the equipment they operate. And we knew that if we entered that space, we, it had to be different. It couldn't be the same story that was already being told by our customers. We needed to break through in some innovative way. And we started looking into what a lot of other brands have done. You've got the chief biscuit officer for Red Lobster. You've got the chief pizza and beer officer for Casey's General Store. How could we take that idea and really blow it out of the water? Um, and so we started there. A lot of those you know, in name only positions were just a few weeks long. They were not the face or voice of any social media channels. We knew going with a content creator would help us break through what perhaps has been a traditional way of storytelling for John Deere. And we wanted this individual to set our content apart from what people might expect from the company or our brand. So it was, it, in essence, you were trying to create my words, not yours, like a step change, if you will, with co-opting and pulling in a creator in-house that's already having some success out in the world. Yeah. And the way we set this up, Alan, is we weren't even really looking for an established influencer. I would say that we found that diamond <laughs> that hadn't quite been discovered yet. We really wanted to find someone who would go on a journey with us, who would help us basically write this job description as they went and discover all the ways Deere's customers impact all of us with the audience. So if you think about an influencer in the construction or ag space, Sometimes we can be our own worst enemy in terms of what we think an audience understands. And the technology that Deere is introducing can be really complicated and complex. How do we find someone that can help explain that technology in a way that someone completely new to these industries can help break through? And so for us, we were really excited to find someone who's a great storyteller, a great content creator, and who is really passionate and excited about telling this story. Before we get to who that person is, yeah. I have to ask, this was not only you launched this effort, but you did it with a little pizzazz and some special yeah. cameo appearances from people like right. Rock, Rock Purdy and a lot of other folks. How did that come about? How did that element of launching this come about? So our budget was not the biggest. I know people are probably surprised to hear that from a company the size of John Deere, but we didn't really have a big budget. Uh, so we had to think about how do we reach a really broad number of audiences in one launch piece? 
We also knew we wanted to reach that 18 to 35 year old demographic who we knew would be on TikTok, who is the generation we're hoping um, to educate through our TikTok channel. And we really leaned into personalities that you would only know if you were chronically online, which is by and large, the younger generations. Within that launch piece, you've got the corn kid right? Who had his moment a couple of years ago. You've got a lot of sports personalities. You have a couple ag influencers. You've got I Justine, who's a, a big tech influencer. And by leveraging their reach and their audience, audiences, we were really able to organically reach numbers we never could have anticipated before we launched that video. And it ended up really expanding who heard that story, the kind of applications we received. And ultimately, the individual we chose for the role found out about it through word of mouth, just from friends who had seen the piece online. Awesome. Let's talk about who you ended up selecting. Tell me a little bit more about Rex and his story. Sure. Rex actually just graduated from college which gives him an incredible ability to travel and be accessible and available to help us capture the content we're seeking to create. He submitted an application video that was very entertaining. He sang, he rapped, he he understood the assignment. A big piece of his pitch video really included the fact that he wanted to tell the story where food comes from, where the roads we travel on comes from. When you talk to Rex, and he's, we've got a video of him talking directly to the camera here on our TikTok right now, he comes from a family, four generations of farmers. But so many young people today, he is now two generations removed from that farming. His cousins still farm. But he innately understands that young people today are moving further and further away from rural areas of the country. They no longer have a deep appreciation for the work that farmers are doing and is really excited and motivated to help connect young people like him to all this incredible work that people that use our equipment do every day. Love that. I love that. And I checked him out on his personal side as well. And he does some phenomenal, I guess, recently, these yeah. little sculptures, if you will. Yeah. He's not he only a, yeah, not only a great he, singer and, and video creator, but he's a he's an artisan in and of itself. Yeah. Correct. And it's funny, one someone online here this weekend said something to the fact that what he was doing before he met us was creating sculptures of endangered animals. He's an environmental science major. He has a passion for the environment and protect, protected species. And he was producing these sculptures out of baby bell wax um, that's wrapped around the cheese. Someone commented this weekend, anyone who can build a following, I think he has over 100,000 followers on his personal page, building sculptures out of baby bell wax. Um, probably knows what he's doing when it comes to building an audience. So I would agree. He's very creative. We found him already in just the first few weeks. He's been an active partner in identifying content opportunities, really understanding what someone his age needs to see, hear, and feel for people to click through the content and has so far really wowed all of us with some of the ideas he's brought forth. And he's seeing it from a fresh perspective, right? And that's what's, that's the advantage of hiring someone outside the industry is he's seeing all of this for the first time and understanding what will resonate most with that. Yeah, it's not only a, a phenomenal opportunity for Rex, it seems like it's a phenomenal opportunity for John Deere too. It is, yeah. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices 
down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See detail. My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big row ass man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. If anyone who knows me over this past year, Alan, I have been on a soapbox of all soapboxes. You know how they say, what's that one opinion you'll die on the hill for? Organic social media today has to be about capturing the audience's attention first. So what a lot of brands do, and I would argue Deer has done this, is we start with the story. We start with that great customer story, the great work, the impact that customer's having, how that is impacting all of us on a daily basis. The problem is that content is competing against Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift content. It's competing against NBA finals content. It's competing against Trump and Biden content. We have to, as marketers, break through the clutter and recognize that in a feed, in all of our feeds, we are competing against the most insane, sensationalized, oftentimes dramatic content you can imagine. So in order to ensure any audience members are going to see the content that I'm sure all of the marketing teams listening are creating, It's going to go to waste if you're not able to grab that audience member in real time. So you need to start by getting their attention. Maybe use some absurd storytelling that's unexpected. And I would argue hiring a 22-year-old recent college graduate (laughs) to talk about farming and construction is a bit absurd. And then you tell your story. But unless they click on it, they're not going to hear it. No, so true. So true. I'm looking forward to following where it goes and and where Rex takes the story, so to speak, on TikTok and other places. We mentioned this a little bit ago, but this, I think, is your first time the brand has partnered with celebrities. How did it go? And would you have advice for others that either are trying to influence and ride pop culture to some degree? Sure. How do you advise others? Deer is a fairly, I would say, very conservative company. And we knew that in order to capture that audience's attention, it couldn't be Deer telling the story. It couldn't be Deer looking for that chief tractor officer. So to some of what you've already referenced, we worked with Brock Purdy to start. And it really came down to making sure that whoever was the lead role in in having the search take place for the chief tractor officer needed to be someone that aligned with our values. And what we found with Brock, he is an amazing underdog story coming out of Iowa State. He wasn't expected to do much when he was drafted very late in, in the NFL draft. Ended up, of course, taking the 49ers to the Super Bowl. And he's an Iowa State grad which makes him a strong Iowa favorite and used his bye week last fall to harvest for his now in-laws at their family farm in Northwest Iowa. So there were so many things that lined up in terms of ensuring that whoever we worked with really aligned well with our brand, who we were, and he felt the same right? Working with his management team, it was really important for them to make sure that Brock was working with a brand that reflected his own values. Vetting is a big part of it. Making sure it's a really, I would say it's a natural fit. If you're trying to force a fit or making it work, you're probably in the wrong space. 
And it just felt so natural to work with Brock. It felt very easy. It felt, felt very flawless. There was mutual excitement from his team and our team. And, and quite frankly, his now extended family now that he's married. So it's just been a really fun partnership to work with him. We even worked with his wife for some of the content that posted later on Instagram. And working with the rest of those cameos were all natural extensions of our brand because for the most part, we'd worked with most of them anyway. And it just felt like we were all on the same page, working towards the same goal and having fun with it on social. You know, whether or not they were contracted to a lot of the folks we worked with just had a lot of fun engaging with the content and sharing it with their audience. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's quite the story and around this chief tractor officer. And I look, like I said before, I look forward to following Rex and where you guys take it. It's a unique position to your point. Many people just do this for a few weeks. I think if I've got it right, this is like a year long position, I believe, right? It is. Yeah. It so, is. So it should be fun to watch from the sidelines, at least. <laughs> I can tell you that even here on the field with him, because it's so new, because we're in uncharted waters here, it, it's the same thrill for us. Decide what that next piece of content is going to be and sit back and, and watch and wait and really learn as we go. And that's the fun part about social media, right? Is you get feedback immediately. There's no denying whether a piece of content is successful or not. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. Very true. Uh, one of the things we like to do is get to know the person behind the microphone as well. And I'd love to ask you a few questions. I ask everyone that comes on the show. The first is my favorite question to ask. It's, has there been an experience of your past that defines or makes up who you are today. Maybe to link back to the nonprofit we talked about earlier in the interview, having an autistic daughter has been without question one of the most pivotal transformations in my life and how I look at my career. And the reason I say that is my daughter Lyric sees the world with such clarity She's not clouded by negativity, by news, by the silly debates we have online, what's popular in popular culture and the like. She has a very simple, straightforward approach to the world, and that grounds me. And it makes me realize on a daily basis what's important. And I would even say being actively involved in the nonprofit we started only enhances that because I've had the ability to meet a number of autistic individuals and their families and the challenges they face on a daily basis. And it really reminds me what matters and that a lot of the things we face at work, a lot of the crisis situations, issues, or challenges are so fleeting and in the end aren't really going to matter a year from now, two years from now. I think that's helped me be a better person, um, a better manager, and to think a lot more clearly in the face of crisis situations or issues or challenges I might face in the role I'm in. So if you were starting this journey all over again, what advice would you give your younger self? To not sweat the small stuff <laughs> and to realize that even the big stuff when you make big mistakes, when you run into a roadblock, when your career takes an unexpected turn, when you don't get the job you wanted, ultimately, all those lessons end up making you so much more successful. It enables you to navigate your career in ways you might not have otherwise. And there were several jobs here, even at Deer, that I didn't get in my 16 years here. And I cannot tell you how grateful I am that I did not get those jobs, that my career ended up taking the path it did to get me where I am today. And so I would just say that while difficult in the moment, those really heavy challenges will pay off in the long run. Is there a topic either 
you're trying to learn more about or you think marketers need to be learning more about mm-hmm. today? It's so common now, it almost seems, sounds cliched, but of course, we're watching AI very closely, trying to understand what that could mean for content creation. How do we use it? What are the ethics of using it? So we've started benchmarking other companies, working with our cybersecurity team even. What do deep fakes mean to the industry? How do we ensure that we remain authentic? I've seen here lately that TikTok is now allowing AI and AI influencers to market products. So that poses a real challenge. How do you disclose that? If you're an AI spokesperson and you're endorsing a brand, what does that mean? You didn't actually use the brand. There's just some really interesting um, case studies that I think we're all going to be watching um, here very quickly as things continue to roll out. So we're having fun with it now, playing with it internally and figuring out how we might use it moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hadn't thought about that, but your point about an AI influencer promoting products that they really couldn't have used. <laughs> I had never yeah. put two and two together, but until you just illustrated it, that is funny. And a head scratcher all at once. <laughs> um, I'm curious if there's any trends or subcultures that you're following you think other people should take notice of. When you say subculture, I immediately think of Twitter slash X. And I can tell you that I'm just going to be honest, at X and Reddit, I spend so much time on a regular basis, just deeply embedding myself in listening to, I wouldn't say I engage in a lot of them, but listening to what's happening in the world. What are people talking about? What are they caring about? What's the tone? How is the news media covering stories? And I do that and have always done it even before this job. I think um, I'm just naturally interested and fascinated by political dialogue and, and how the media operates just due to my PR background. But it has really helped my team understand on a daily basis what the tone of our channels should be. We always want to make sure that not only are we listening to the broader culture at large, what's happening in politics, maybe what's, is there any devastating news of the day that we need to be mindful of? But even more, what are our our customers saying? Are they facing farming challenges right now? Do we need to be careful how humorous we want to be? Do we need to be cautious of any inadvertent tone deaf? approach we might take. When I think about subcultures, I just I encourage anyone in social media to make sure that you really are chronically online. I know there's some folks out there that say you don't need to be. I think it helps ensure that you don't run into an accidental PR issue. Yeah, I think that's a, a smart and wise suggestion. And it to your point on Reddit in particular, X, I'm having trouble like maybe it's my algorithm. But getting it's to not. okay, all right. It's not just me. All right, it's, it's, it's not. It's it's the new ownership and yeah. Prior to the new ownership, there were such robust communities, right? right. Like we right. were all in marketing communities. Yeah. We were all in advertising, PR, social media. Uh, it was robust, and you felt like you were in a room with your colleagues and peers. And that now my feed is just. I have to search out those people, Alan. Your feed is just filled with what's viral. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. It's not just me. Not just me. No, it is not, unfortunately. <laughs> well, so I personally, I find that a little less useful. But to your point around like understanding the tone and where people are going, what's trending and the news, I totally get. Reddit is, and I just talked to another person about this recently, it is a, it is like a deep dive into any topic you can ever think about. (laughs) And that's actually fairly useful. You have to be careful. Please, people listening to this, don't take everything you read on Reddit at face value. I have to say that. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) uh, for sure. But it is a huge research tool if you just want to understand and and kind of circle around the topic, if you will. There is a community for every hobby you can imagine. 
There is a community for every health condition you, you can imagine, right? To your point, it is really useful when you just want to take a deep dive in even how people are talking about a certain topic. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. I think it's probably one of the most underutilized sources of information out there, to be honest. That's because those of us that use it don't want to let everyone else know. <laughs> I guess we should say, oops, we, we just let the <laughs> listeners know. <laughs> Not our edge, people. Last question for you before I let you go. What, what do you feel is the largest opportunity or threat facing marketers today? To go back to what I was saying, I think it is the fleeting attention span we all have. It is the flood of content in all of our feeds and the inability and nearly impossible task of trying to break through all that clutter. The future is probably going to look, probably, the future will look so differently. I think when you look at TikTok's algorithm and how insanely astute it is at knowing precisely what you're interested in and establishing a feed that feeds into that interest. We are becoming closer and closer to a world where everything's so hyper-individualized that we are going to have lost that sense of community altogether. So I think that ability to break through the noise is increasingly becoming more difficult and a bigger challenge for all of us to reach those target audiences that we're all paid to reach on a daily basis. Jen, thank you so much for coming on, sharing about your campaign, the efforts you have around social and all the insights along the way. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been fun chatting with you. Hi, it's Alan again. Marketing Today was created and produced by me with post-production support from Sam Robertson. If you're new to Marketing Today, please feel free to write us a review on iTunes or your favorite listening platform. Don't forget to subscribe on marketingtodaypodcast.com. Tell your friends and colleagues about the show. I love hearing from listeners. You can contact me at marketingtodaypodcast.com. There you'll also find complete show notes and links to what was discussed in the episode today. And you can search our archives. I'm Alan Hart, and this is Marketing Today. Every day, thousands of Comcast engineers and technologists like Kunle put people at the heart of everything they create. The way that I approach work post-fatherhood has really been trying to understand the generation that we're building devices for. Here at the Comcast family, we're building an integrated in-home Wi-Fi solution for millions of families like my own. Now millions of families can work, learn, and play together under one roof. Visit ComcastCorporation.com to learn more. It's almost time. Verizon Small Business Days are coming from October 14th to the 20th. Meet with our experts, get one-on-one -on -one advice, a free tech check, and special offers. Don't miss out. Give your business the VIP treatment it deserves. Call 1-800-483-4428 or go to verizon.com slash small business. Get started today.